Yo, we gotta celebrate a big win for America. See, the headline, Federal Judge Illegal Immigrants Can Carry Guns, triggered a lot of people. But that's because they didn't really look into what this actually was ruling on. Now, I'm going to show you why this operation to traffic all these illegal migrants into the country for the purpose of getting them to vote in favor of the, the party is going to end up backfiring. It's so crazy. One second. In a ruling that had both proponents and opponents of the Second Amendment do a curious double take, a federal judge has ruled that an illegal immigrant was wrongly banned from possessing firearms. District Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman ruled on March 8th that the defendant, Mr. Flores, who is residing in the U.S. illegally, had his Second Amendment rights violated when prosecutors originally charged him with 18 U.S. Code 922, which bars illegal immigrants from carrying guns or ammunition. Quote, the non-citizen possession statute 18 U.S.C. 922 G5 violates the Second Amendment as applied to Mr. Flores, Coleman wrote in her ruling. Thus, the court grants Mr. Flores motion to dismiss. The defense team had argued there in the recent motion that the government could not show the law referenced was part of the historical tradition that delimits the outer bounds of the right to keep and bear arms. We'll get to more, we'll, we'll clarify that in a second. In 2022, the Supreme Court ruled that the government must show that each regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. The precise wording of the high court's decision was enough for the defense to argue successfully in favor of dismissal. Lifetime disarmament of an individual based on alienage or nationality alone does not have roots in the history and tradition of the United States, Mr. Flores' lawyer said. The government argues that Flores is a non-citizen who is unlawfully present in this country. The court notes, however, that Mr. Flores has never been convicted of a felony, a violent crime, or a crime involving the use of a weapon. Even in the present case, Mr. Flores contends that he received and used a handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest in the spring of 2020, Coleman wrote. Writing on the reload, attorney, he's got the take right here, right here. Attorney Matthew LaRosier agreed with the decision saying that even those in the country illegally are part of the people the framers mention in the Second Amendment. To find that illegal immigrants are outside of the people protected by the Second Amendment, you must believe that the framers were talking about a different people in the First, Fourth, Ninth, and Tenth Amendments. So if you're going to rule against Flores, you're saying he's not part of the people. This would mean all of the rights secured by the Constitution, not granted, secured by the Constitution as your natural human rights, God given. You could say that then Flores doesn't have a right to free speech because he's illegal. You could say Flores does not have a right to be protected against unlawful search and seizure because he's not part of the people. See, this goes down to the fundamentals of America. The Constitution and Bill of Rights doesn't grant us rights. We have God-given rights. And we create a government and give it limited power to secure our rights. This is what Americans don't understand. So this ruling that allows him to continue to protect himself with a firearm is great for America because what they just did was solidify that the Constitution protects your right as a person naturally. Now, let's go further. In case people say the government didn't give you this right or that right, that's not listed in the Constitution, we have a Ninth Amendment. It states that 
the list of rights enumerated in the Constitution is not exhausted and that the people retain all rights not enumerated or listed. The Tenth Amendment assigns all powers not delegated to the United States or prohibited to the United States to either the states or to the people because the government gets its authority and power from the people, not the other way around. So we give the government the authority to exercise power over certain affairs. Next step. Let's look at this article in the Meridian Star. As Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So the government derives its power from the consent of the governed. So we give the government power. This is what America needs to wake up to. Now, they're thinking this whole operation of flooding the country with outsiders to vote for them is going to perpetually keep them in power. And if they want to ban guns in your city, blah, 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 they're, they're hoping that they can control these places by flooding them with migrants and then using that for maintaining power. And to have Americans fighting with migrants. We ain't got no problem. Well, I ain't got no problem with no migrants. We all got problems with people who are trying to hurt people and all of that. Yes, definitely. But for the growth of the country and all that, I ain't tripping. But look, when you're using a bunch of people against your own country, then it's a problem. But see, what they don't understand is this is not going to work for them the way they think it will. What they're actually doing by flooding mostly gun ban cities with all these people, all these migrants, is they're making it so unstable and unsecure that Americans are in those cities like New York are going to realize that nobody can, the state can't protect you. It's open season on you out there and you're, you gave up your right to protect yourself. You let it be legal for well, it's not legal ever, but you let the state say you can't have guns. So now it's open season for all the criminals that get to, you know, run the streets and they're hungry. Now, what's going to actually backfire is that Americans are going to see that nobody's coming here to help them. And the people that are coming here to help them are just coming here to, I mean, the state, when it says it's going to help them, is just putting National Guard on the streets. So now you get to live under a police state. Do you like New York? Do you want to live with military all over your streets, National Guard at the subway, rifles everywhere, bag searches? See, the government's only answer and only answer it ever once is more power and more control. Check out Russell Brand Break It Down. Bag checks and beefed up security with members of the National Guard. Beefed up like it's nutritious. It's like a bone broth made out of a gun pointed at you by the state. Night, night. As CBS 2's Naveen Dhaliwal reports, the plan comes on the same day as another attack on a conductor. So, you know, attacks on conductors gotta bring in the army, so. With riders on edge, the governor is putting a plan in place that includes cameras in conductor cabs and more cops on the platforms. At Grand Central Terminal Wednesday evening, bag checks were underway. It seems to me that in order to protect the legitimizing, raising authority, and indeed, there's such a sort of raging debate in your country about guns and gun ownership and gun laws, and all it seems to amount to really is not whether or not there are guns, but who's allowed to have them. And we now know that the state doesn't want to discuss their guns. What about the dangers and threats of those guns? What about the many people that are killed in friendly fires, in wars? Perhaps all we're talking about in politics is who has the right to kill. As tackling subway safety is now at the top of the list for city and state officials. Look at the slave training. Slaves. This is what they did with 9-11. Now you got to get patted down or you got to get radiated and go through air to go through airports, TSA. What they just did right here, now you got basically a new form of TSA 
at the subways. People in America need to wake up. This is only leading to more control searching. You won't have these supposed rights you think you have, like unlimited, I mean, protection against search and seizure. No, because you're so scared because you let them flood us. You, when I say you, we, we, we got lazy and let the government flood us with all these people because we don't pay attention. And we thought being nice that it wasn't going to get to this. It was always going to get to this. But those of us who've been following this for a long time, we know the government moves step by step. So the next step, police state, more police state. You can't carry this on the train. You can't carry that. If you got weapons or if you got a gun on you to protect yourself in New York, you can't do that. Only the people who don't abide by the law can have the guns. And are they going to have enough? Um, are they going to have enough cops and National Guard everywhere in New York to protect you? No. It's, you're, a, you're a sitting duck. These brazen, heinous attacks on our subway system. On our democracy by me. What? No, Same. sorry. I mean, on our subway by someone who's not me have got to be met by everyone's got guns now that works for me. You don't work for me? No guns. You work for me? Gun. Simple, really? Huh? Will not be tolerated. This was a stern message from the governor. It is a stern message. It's a stern, very aggressive message. It's an authoritarian message. It's not stern. It's authoritarian. It will not be tolerated. I don't care about your past. I don't care about your social conditions. I don't care about your mental health. I don't care if there's been a fentanyl crisis. I don't care if America's breaking down. I don't care if you're delirious with doubt and you can't feel God in your heart anymore because you're surrounded by lies and treachery. All I care about is do as you're told or we'll kill you. I mean, that what is the message. After several attacks in the transit system in the past week, these attacks prompting the governor to deploy a thousand members of the National Guard. Look, that's the news doing the job of program. These attacks prompting the governor. I don't know. I bet if you had the time to look at the data, you go, how many attacks are there each year since 1970 in New York on staff members? And then you'd have to look at a sort of a variety of factors. Poverty, inequality of wealth, mental illness, some government support. There's so many vital components. When the solution is always, we're going to take some more power because of of this there's a really nasty cough going around so in conclusion we're gonna take a lot more power there's a really nasty putin going around so in conclusion we're gonna take a lot more power don't forget they're the ones naming themselves sanctuary cities and they're the ones with the federal government trafficking people with an open border into the united states and then when all of this happens they take your rights. That's what they do. So what's going to happen is Americans are going to realize you can't you can't operate securely in places like New York and feel safe and comfortable because they're flooded with millions of new people that are hungry and need. And when people are hungry and don't have a way to feed themselves, it just turns into robin season. Uh, that's what it is. So they're going to realize, well, if I got to be carrying a weapon illegally because it's still illegal in new york but i'm gonna protect my life you're gonna protect your life and now what the government doesn't realize is that they're retraining americans to what made this country great in the first place you could have property and you could defend your property and yourself and your family and once everybody people don't get it when when you know that there's a great chance that that person might have a strap on them too. Pause. You're not just going to pull your gun out for no reason. But in those type of cities where you know it's basically if you're a criminal, you got it on you. If they're not a criminal, they're just a they're about to be a victim. And you don't got to worry about retaliation. Now go try, you know, having a a shooting in a random place and some of these other states where guns is like everywhere. We love them. You know what I mean? Try it. It don't work. Because you're going to get popped right when you try. There's some really nasty truckers going on. So in conclusion, we're going to take a lot more power. Is the answer always going to be, you're going to take a lot more power? There's a lot of people saying on the internet that we're taking too much power. So we're going to be taking a lot more power and censoring those people. Hmm, okay, and the threat is Donald Trump how? 
and police to subway systems across New York City. It's what they're doing, checking bags to make sure explosive or illegal weapons aren't entering our subway system. I think it's rather offensive to all of us as human beings that Eric Adams being a person of colour will be framed and celebrated here. Or that the news reporter is a person of colour. I think both of those things are great. How fantastic. Let's have a diverse and representative, but above all else, fair and equal and truly representative society where you don't centralise authority. I'm getting rather tired of the idea that equality and fairness means highlighting programmes of representation in order to mask increasing authoritarianism. I agree with equality, in particularly when it comes to matters around gender and sex, but above all, wealth and power. City officials say each week NYPD bag screening teams will be at 136 stations. Thank the Lord we can bring you this content because of the support of our... See, it's so sad to watch Americans submit to more and more tyranny being searched to do regular things day to day. These are the same people who's, who learned in history in school. Oh my God, I can't believe that the SS was searching people in the streets and you had to show your papers. It's the same thing. But Americans need to wake up because, well, if you don't wake up, then what's coming to you is going to come to you. And it ain't, and people, it's not going to really have that much, you know, care for people who willingly gave up their rights and now they became victims because they want the government to protect them. What they're going to learn and what they're learning is government's not going to protect you. They're going to exploit you and they're going to make you the enemy. Everybody can see it's Americans that are the enemy. So the, uh, the other people that are getting shipped in, they're being used against Americans. Now, I, I'm of the belief, I'm the type of person that I ain't got no beef with no uh, foreigners. Like the, the average foreigner immigrant that's coming in is a cool person that's trying to make a living in America, which anybody who was outside of America would probably want to do, come to America. But they're purposefully not checking, not doing any security at the border, and they're shipping these people and flying them in and not running no backgrounds and nothing like that because they need the gang members that are coming from outside of the U.S., and looting and doing whatever they want to do, they need that to get more control in places like New York. They need the crime because without that, people don't ask the government for more government. You <laughs> dig? So that's what it is a big win for the US Constitution and for Americans and for Americans that's waking up. Shout out to the USA J Midnight, Midnight Hustle.